Hello, my sincere and heartfelt greetings to all viewing. I'm Queen Sheba III, the Queen of Sheba, Empress of the Nubia Sheba Kingdom Nations, and very happy and delighted to be here speaking to you today. I thank Justina Matali for the opportunity to address to you. I just finished a Zoom meeting just minutes ago. I had a speech prepared, written to address you. And I put it away. I had my crown on and I took it away. I follow my intuition. I follow my heart. And my intuition and my heart said, put away the crown, put away the paper. Just speak to you. The fact that we are still discussing issues of gender, issues of women, and issues affecting girls is horrific. It is absolutely horrific. I am much too straightforward as nature to put decorations on the truth because one does not paint gold or polish diamonds. Truth is the truth. It is horrific. But yet at the same time, the resilience of the female, the resilience of women and the resilience of the girl child is incomparable. I took off the crown and I put away the written, nice written five minutes speech. Because today I'm a woman, I'm a mother, a grandmother, but I too was once a girl. And if I look back at that time, if I look back at my life, if I look back at my childhood as that girl, is why I took the crown off and I put the speech away so I can speak to you as that girl. My childhood was not a bed of roses. It was not. And I know the childhood, the teenage years, the youth, for many women, for many girls, many of our youths is not a bed of roses. For many, it is horrific. It is terrible. For many, the issues facing the girl children are not per se by those outside of the house, outside of the, the environment, outside of the community, but right there within. I often say the Almighty knows why my hair has been pretty white since childhood. At times I cover it with black paint, but no, my hair was white since a child. To address the girl child, to address the girls, to address women, to address that, we must address the environment that we put our children in. We must have, uh, uh, address the traditions that we use as blind dukes in our heads so we cannot see blind foes that we do not see what happens to our children. 
to help the girls, we in the public eyes, we in the positions of any measure of authority must be honest. Not all of our lives were butterflies, were happy, were easy. You know, I do not mean that of the responsibilities that children may have to do the chores or whatever, no. But the essential needs of security, of feeling that love, the confidence, the self-confidence, the self-value, the self-dignity, the self-worth, the self itself. I'm not here to tell you about my life as a child. In fact, this is the first time in my 57 years that I publicly even mentioned it. I believed as a young girl, as a teenager, as a young woman, as a young mother, that whatever people can do, whatever life can show me, true to me, may break my bones, may break my body, may break the legs, may break whatever, but they will never, ever, ever break me. Girls, your spirit is like an infinite fire that nothing and no one can put out but you. I've grown, grown up, obviously. I'm on the throne of thrones and the queen of queens because I'm born into a family that was very old and the lines of ancient Egypt, ancient Nubia, mother throne of Sheba. I'm blessed to be a part of many cultures from Northeast Africa, Middle East and South Europe and Caribbean. Indeed, the issues facing girls is global. But the cure, the solution too, is global. And if we really need and want to make that change, we will stop talking about it and do it. Change change the laws and bylaws that allow for a feeling of patriarchy above all and matriarchy below because it's those girls that grow to women and in their door to make a duplication of the female self and in our sons produce our opposite the male we the women the girls, the mothers of the nation, the mothers of this planet. So we do not ask respect. Unapologetically, we retake that respect. That the childhood of the women and the childhood of the girls, when they look back, would be one that we can look upon with happiness, not sadness, not stripping of dignities or dreams or hope. I'm proud today to sit on the throne. I try my best in all that I do. Does it mean that everything disappears? No, we have a way, and I like being honest, that 
some semblance of that it, it, it stays there. And I, I have the feeling, especially if you do something that you are to do in life, you will get more attacked, but you will be stronger. I'm honored today to be the World Peace Committee Deputy President for Africa. I'm honored today to be the World Organization of States Deputy Minister for Africa. The Deputy Minister and the Deputy President are both the highest roles in Africa. I'm honored to be on many different foundations. I'm honored to be the Vice President of the Arab African Council for Integration and Development, which is representing the 23 countries of the 55 Africa. I'm honored with all of these things, and I'm not saying it to glorify myself or self-glorify. I have no need, I, I have no need, I have no use, I have no desire to. There's a lot more roles. But what I'm saying is no one can stop your destiny but you. Be stronger and stronger. Love you and let go of the weight that we feel. Flourish and prosper to the girls and to the women. Study, study whatever you can study and rise. Today is the International Day of the Girls. Let us make an effort to unite and be there for each other. Me, I'm there for you. I can do, so can you. Each in our worlds, our environment, and our space, and nothing. And no one can stop that. Thank you.